what if I were to tell you guys the best team in the NBA right now is the Los Angeles Clippers? Yes, these guys. And the best player on that team, well, that doesn't take a genius to figure out. Because who else is blocking Steph Curry's three-pointers on one end and then going down the other end and making shot after shot after shot? I mean, look at this move against Kaminga. He creates the space on the post-up, a quick spin inside, absorbing the contact all the way before hitting the hook shot through contact. He was making shots like that whilst being the primary defender on Steph Curry, causing him to have his worst shooting performance of the entire season. But none of this should come as a surprise. Seeing as the last time we saw Kawhi play high leverage basketball, well, he was clearly the best player on a court, which included Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, averaging 35, 6, and 6 on absurd efficiency. And I think we all know, if it wasn't for injury, the Phoenix Suns would have been embarrassed in the first round of last year's playoffs. And you know what? 24 games into this season, not only is Kawhi dominating, he is yet to miss a game, regardless of what Stephen A. Smith has to say. First of all, let's get something out of the way. We know Kawhi Lens going to miss games, right? We do know this. It's inevitable. I mean, he's injury prone. We know this. Oh, Oh, by the way, the same Stephen A. Smith who just six months ago said Kawhi Leonard should retire. But should we really be surprised by what ESPN has to say? Because heading into this season, do you want to guess where they ranked the claw? 24th. 2-4, which just tells me what we already knew. They don't watch basketball because Kawhi is doing exactly what he did last season. After a slow first 15 games of the year, Kawhi has come alive over the last nine games, averaging 29-7 and seven on efficiency that shouldn't even be legal. And like I said, this is exactly what he did last year, in which he averaged 27-7-4 and four over an extended period leading into the playoffs. The only difference this year is he's playing every single game. And that's a problem for the rest of the league because I have yet to see an answer for him on either end of the floor. Just look at his recent game against the Kings where he shot 11 of 14 and in typical Kawhi fashion, he makes everything look so easy. Like here where he gets the handoff from Zoo, gets Lyles on his hip and it looks as though he's going to his patented step back. But in typical Kawhi fashion, he stops on a dime, palms the ball in his right hand and steps through for the push shot. Yes, I say typical Kawhi fashion, because who else is palming the ball with one hand and then casually stepping through like it's an absolute walk in the park? And the reason Kawhi doesn't get talked about enough as a scorer is because he makes everything look so easily. Occasionally, he'll have a massive poster to remind everyone that he's a freak athlete. But for the most part, he methodically dices up opposing teams, using his combination of strength and skill to get defenders on his back or on his hip before getting to wherever he wants on the floor and just rising up. Just ask Keegan Murray, who's been elite defensively this season. But none of that matters against Kawhi. As he gets the ball at the elbow, he turns back to the basket, dribbles a couple of times to the middle of the floor, and the rest is a familiar story. It's not just his ability to rise up in the mid-range, but Kawhi also has such a unique floater, if you can even call it that. Because we all see the floaters from the likes of Luke and Trey, where they get to the middle of the floor and use a little bit of misdirection before tossing it up. Kawhi has more of a running push shot that only he can really do because it requires the ability to absorb contact whilst keeping the ball in one hand and then just throwing it in with very little arc but so, so much control. But not only is he killing it in the mid-range as we've seen him do for years, one thing about Kawhi that still annoys me is how little credit he gets for his shooting. Sure, the volume isn't crazy, but since 2016, he's shooting 39.6% from three on nearly five attempts per game. And so far this season, he's at 42%, which includes catch and shoot opportunities, pull up threes off dribble handoffs, or best of all, going one-on-one -on -one and just sticking threes in the face of whoever has the unenviable task of trying to guard him. And it's this incredible level of shot making that has meant whenever Kawhi is healthy, he's one of the best five to six players in the NBA. Look no further than what he's done in 
the playoffs. Right here are the top playoff performers since 2020 and the efficiency at which they've scored. I specifically used since 2020 because that's post Toronto to prove that as a clipper, Kawhi has been just as good as ever. And right now, he's doing this whilst also playing every single game. And oh yeah, it's worth mentioning that not only is he playing every single game, he's still defending at a very high level. Right here is Steph Curry with the ball 30 feet from the basket. He drives right before crossing back quickly, and generally that would be a wide open look. However, Kawhi's combination of lateral movement and length is enough to contest the shot perfectly. And this isn't just a one-off performance. He might not be the best defender in the league anymore, but he's the best defender on a team who is currently ranked sixth in the NBA in defensive rating. And that's because in addition to his isolation defense, his help defense is still game-changing. Just watch this play where he starts by guarding Barnes, who gives it off to Sabonis and looks for the quick back cut, which Kawhi is alert to. Sabonis then gives it to Mari on the back cut, but with Kawhi having rotated off Barnes, he's there to block the shot under the rim. And this is the advantage of having a 7 foot 3 wingspan to go along with incredible anticipation. It allows him to act as a de facto rim protector at times, rotating into the paint and deterring shots or just straight up blocking them at the rim. Or even outside of the paint, he can make plays like here where Ingram is posting up and Kawhi sneaks from behind, casually ripping the ball out of his hands at the apex of his jump shot. No one else even has the audacity to try something like that, yet Kawhi is out here making it look easy. I mean, not that you guys need any more convincing of his defensive ability, but it's generally a good sign when you can come up with three steals in one game off Nikola Jokic. Yes, he did that. But I think if there's one part of Kawhi's game that doesn't get enough credit, it has to be his playmaking. He's not someone that's going to average a crazy number of assists per game, but his decision making is elite. Look no further than the plays he made at the end of the game versus Golden State. On this play, he gets the ball in the post. He quickly faces up, attacks the middle of the floor, and pours it. With the defense collapsed on him, he doesn't force the shot, but instead takes an extra dribble, steps through, and drops the dime. Or in this play, that didn't result in a bucket, but look at the cross-court pass from Kawhi here after he saw the double team. And that's what you get with Kawhi's playmaking. He recognizes when help is being sent, and that's when he makes the right decisions, often slicing through defenses like he does as a scorer, but in an instant being able to turn a shooting opportunity for himself into a dime for someone else. And I mentioned the assist numbers not being that high, but a credit to his decision making is the fact his turnover numbers are so low. Just look at his last two seasons in which he's averaged 1.5 and 1.6 turnovers a game respectively, which for reference is about 40% as often as the likes of Joel Embiid, Luka Doncic, and Giannis Antetokounmpo, which many would say is a result of usage but even in the playoffs, when he starts averaging 20 shots a game, the turnovers still remain at 2 to 2.5 a game, which is such an underrated skill to have. And it's just one of the many reasons why when he is healthy, there are not many players in the league better than him. If you did make it all the way to the end of the video, you might as well drop a like, subscribe to the channel, it's free. Have a good day. Bye.